Hey, what's up, Trainiacs? Just about to do a small swim here, and uh, it's getting a little hot in the wetsuit. I think I'm sweating. You got that? So classy on this channel. We are going to be doing a test just to show you the difference in speed and kind of performance between a wetsuit and then with swim skin. So we have here a short sleeve swim skin. We have a sleeveless swim skin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a 200 at an easy pace and then 450s at a faster pace. I'm gonna use a tempo trainer to kind of keep the paces all the same. I'm gonna do that same test with the wetsuit, with the swim skin that has shorter sleeves, with the sleeveless, and then I'll do it without anything and you can kind of compare how the differences are. So we'll do that. I gotta get in the water, I'm hot. suit on and I did that in three minutes 13 seconds I was doing that at 65 strokes per minute no you want to hear that oh. <laughs> stop that now we're gonna crank this up to let's go to 75 strokes per minute for the fast stuff and we'll do four fifties at that little bit faster effort which is kind of like just barely above race pace like a kind of a sprint or an Olympic race pace. We'll take 20 seconds, rest in between, so I've got a good rest, so I'm fresh for each trip. All right, so those were done in 41s and 42 seconds. Swim skin now. Done it at 321. Go up to 75 and see what we do these at. Those ones were done in a couple of 44s and a couple of 45s. That one was done at 3.23, I believe. Those ones were also done, 44s and 45s. Maybe just creeping closer towards the 45 than anything. I was done on a 325. Pushing 46. All right, let's save all that. Go back to the pain cavern and talk about it. Okay, Traniacs. 
let's dive into the results of that testing. Now, of course, I know there's gonna be a lot of scientists out there that are like, hey, that test wasn't statistically valid. Like, none of these tests are statistically valid. I'm a guy with a camera going into a pool or like, with the disc wheel video, disc wheel versus non-disc wheel video that I did, apparently I got ripped apart online for that because it's not statistically valid. I'm a guy on the side of the road with a wrench and a set of wheels. I know it's not statistically valid. I'm not submitting these for publication, but what we're trying to do is pull out some information that might help us make some good decisions. And you know what? A lot of these things that I talk about are actually just confirming actual studies that have been done out there, all right? So people just need to calm down sometimes. Okay, so what we're gonna look at is the average pace for each of those tests. First, let's look at the wetsuit. And we'll analyze this and we will look at the lap number one. So lap number one, I did that 200 meters in three minutes, 14 seconds. So like right here, let's write these down. So 200 meters in a wetsuit, three minutes, 14 seconds. Then I did those four fifties going here. I did that one, the first one in 42.51, then 43.08 then 43.19, then 43.55. So let's call that roughly an average of just a touch over 43 seconds. That includes pressing it, starting, hitting the wall, stopping. So a little bit more than what I said. So remember those times, put them up here, boom. 3.14 for 200 meters and 43 just a little bit more for each 50 meters. Now let's take a look at the short sleeved swim skip. The 200 meters, 323, about nine seconds slower. Then the other laps, 4527, 4725, 4528, 4526. Let's call that roughly about 45 and a half for the short sleeve swim skip. Then, Let's go with the sleeveless swim skip. The 200 meters, 328, even a little bit slower. Then the 50s were done 45, 46, 45, 65, 45, 80. So we're talking even just a little bit slower than the others. So we're looking at somewhere around 45 and three quarter seconds, just a tiny bit slower than the short sleeve swim skin. And then with nothing whatsoever, just me and my glorious Speedo, we're talking about a 326 for the 200 meters. And then a 4664, 4685, a 4616, a 4753. So we're talking about 46 and a half at that point. So what we're seeing is that basically the exact way that I set it up was how I intended for the wetsuit to be the fastest, which it is, the short sleeve swim skin to be the next fastest, then the sleeveless swim skin, then nothing. Now let me explain why that is. If you are like me, you're an average swimmer, you have sinky legs, you don't have a swim background, you started out not being terribly comfortable in the pool, a wetsuit is almost always going to be the best way that you should go about swimming. It provides you with warmth in cool water, provides you with buoyancy in all water, so it's a lot safer. It allows you to coast more on the surface. If you take a look at the footage that we did there, you'll notice that I was just sitting higher in the water because that wetsuit is completely buoyant. Now, with the swim skins, that's not actually the case. It doesn't provide any sort of buoyancy. It doesn't provide any lift. It doesn't provide really any sort of warmth. So then why go with the swim skin and why was it actually still a little bit faster? Well, the reason for that is that 
One of the benefits that we see with a wetsuit, particularly the Roca X that I've got there, is that it keeps you stable. It keeps you from wiggling around side to side. A swim skin does very much the same thing. It compresses you, it keeps you very tight. In addition to that, our skin is not actually that aerodynamic or hydrodynamic. So the more we can cover up our skin, the faster we're going to be. So those swim skins, they work from two standpoints. Number one, they squeeze you in really tight, keeping you really boom, nice and aligned, nice and straight, keeping you from doing this. And the more you cover up with longer sleeves or with a body and short sleeves or no sleeves, you end up becoming more hydrodynamic in the water. And that's exactly what we see is that as we went from the wetsuit to absolutely nothing, we just got slower and slower because we reduced the amount of buoyancy that we had and we started increasing the amount of skin surface area that was showing. Now, do you need a wetsuit or a swim skin? I would say if your race allows you to use a wetsuit, absolutely use a wetsuit. Do you need a swim skin? If you are a complete beginner triathlete just getting into the sport, probably don't need a swim skin. But if you are going to be in the sport for a long time, you already know that you're going to be traveling and probably racing in hotter climates that don't allow wetsuits, and you do want that extra couple of seconds because you want to shave off seconds everywhere that you can, and you want to make sure that you're not wiggling you are going to benefit from a swim skin, no matter what type of swimmer you are. But do you absolutely need it? Probably not. Now, this is actually an entire chapter in the new book that we've released, Triathlon Swimming Foundations, that helps new triathletes develop into confident and capable swimmers. And it kind of weeds through that. Here are the things that you should buy. Here are the things that you don't really need to buy. And here are the benefits of each. And you can get that by going to triathlonterran.com forward slash triathlon swimming book. You can check that out. And now you know whether you should be using a wetsuit or a swim skin. I use both. But man, do I like me a wetsuit swim. Just love me a wetsuit swim. All right. Check it out, Trainiacs, triathlonterran.com forward slash triathlon swimming book and hit the subscribe button below if you are a new triathlete and you aren't yet subscribed. Later.